it's Mrs. Reed again. We are now on chapter 14 of Gregor the Overlander. And in the last chapter, they were at the, with the bats, um, trying to get them to join the quest. And if you remember, there are tossing boots up and down the bats were doing it so she wouldn't fall. So would you surrender to the bats? Hmm, me, not so much. <laughs> I don't, I'm kind of like Gregor. I don't like heights. So we're going to move on to chapter 14. Here we go. They flew through the dark tunnels for hours. Gregor felt Boots' little head sink down in his shoulder and he let her go. You couldn't let her nap too long during the day or she'd wake up in the middle of the night wanting to play. But how could he keep her awake when it was dark and she couldn't move? Eh, he'd deal with it later. The gloom brought all Gregor's negative thoughts back. Dad imprisoned by rats, his mom crying, the dangers of taking boots on this unknown voyage, and his own fear at the pillar. When he felt the bat coasting down for a landing, he was relieved at the distraction, although he disliked meeting up with Luxa and Henry again. He was sure they would be more smug and patronizing than ever. They dipped into the cavern that was so low, the bat's wings brushed both the ceiling and the floor. When they landed, Gregor dismounted, but couldn't straighten up without bumping his hard hat. The place reminded him of a pancake, round and large and flat. He could see why the cockroaches had chosen it. The bats couldn't fly well and the humans and rats couldn't fight properly with four foot high ceilings. He roused Boots, meaning he woke her up, who seemed to enjoy her, her new surroundings. She toddled around, standing on tiptoes to touch the ceiling with her fingers. Everyone else just sat on the ground and waited. The bats haunched over, twisting or twitching at what Gregor supposed were the sounds that he couldn't even hear. A delegation of roaches appeared and bowed low. The humans got to their knees and bowed back. So Gregor did the same thing. No one was no no one to stand on ceremony. Boots ran up to the arms extended in greeting. Bugs! Big bugs! She cried. A happy murmur ran through the group of roaches. Be she the princess, be she? Be she the one temp? Be she? Boots singled out one roach in particular and patted it between the antennas. Hi, you! Go ride! We go ride! Knows me, the princess? Knows me? said the roach in awe, and all the other roaches gave little gasps. Even the humans and bats exchanged looks of surprise. We go ride? More ride? said Boots. Big bug take Boots ride? She said, patting him even more vigorously on the head. Gentle Boots, said Gregor, hurrying to catch her hand. He placed it softly on the bug's head. Be gentle, like with puppy dogs. Ah, gentle, gentle, said Boots, lightly bouncing her palm on the roach. It quivered in joy. Knows me, the princess, knows me, the roach whispered. Recalls the ride, does she? Gregor peered closely at the roach. Oh, are you the one who carried her to the stadium, he asked. The roach nodded in assent. I be temp. I be, he said. Now Gregor knew what all the fuss was about. To his eyes, Temp looked exactly like the other 20 roaches sitting around. How on earth could Boots have picked him out of the crowd? Vicus looked at him with raised eyebrows as if asking for an explanation, but Gregor could only shrug and reply. It was pretty weird. More ride, pleaded Boots. Tump fell on his face reverently, and she clambered onto his back. For a minute, everybody was just watching them pattering around the chamber when Vikeless cleared his throat. <clears throat> Crawlers, we have grave matters to place before you. Take us to your king, take us. 
the roaches reluctantly tore themselves away from watching Boots and led Vicus and Sullivan away. Oh, great, thought Gregor. Here we go again. He even felt less comfortable than when Vicus had left the first time. Who knew what Henry and Luxa might do now? And then there was this matter of the giant roaches. He didn't feel particularly safe in the bug land. Just yesterday, they had considered trading him and Boots to the rats. Well, at least there was Marith, who seemed decent enough, and the bats weren't too bad. Temp and one other roach named Tick had stayed behind. They completely ignored the rest of the party while they took turns giving the toddler rides. The five bats gathered together in a clump and fell asleep, exhausted from the day's flight. Merith placed the torches together to make a small fire and put some food on to warm. Henry and Luxa sat apart, speaking in low voices, ah, which was fine with Gregor. Merith was the only one he felt like talking to anyway. So, can you tell the, the crawlers apart, Merith? asked Gregor. He dumped all his batteries on the ground to sort out the dead ones while they talked. No, it is most rare that your sister can. Among us, there are few that can make distinctions. Vicus is better than most, but to pick one from so many? It is passing strange, said Merith. Perhaps it is a gift of the overlanders, he suggested. No, no, they look identical to me, said Gregor. Boots was really good at those games where you gave four pictures that looked alike, except one had tiny difference. Looked like there were four party hats, and one had seven stripes instead of six. And... If they were all drinking from paper cups, she always knew whose was whose, even if they got mixed up at the table together. Hmm, maybe every roach really did look distinctively different to her. Gregor opened up the flashlight and took two D-sized batteries. He swapped the other batteries in and out, trying to determine which one still had power. As he worked, he inadvertently flipped the switch on when the flashlight was pointing at Luxa and Henry. They jumped, unaccustomed to sudden bursts of light. Uh, he did it a couple more times on purpose, which was childish, but he did like seeing them flinch. They'd last about five seconds in New York City, he thought. Well, that made him feel a little bit better. Of the ten batteries, all but two still had juice. Gregor opened up the compartment in his hat and found it ran on the same on, on some special rectangular battery. Hmm, not having any replacements, he would have to use it sparingly. Maybe I should save this for last. If I lose the others, or they go dead, I'll still have this on my head, he thought. He clicked off the light on the hat. Gregor put the good batteries back in his pocket and set the other two aside. Ah, these two are duds, he said to Merith. They don't work. Shall I burn them? said Merith, reaching for the batteries. Gregor cut his wrist before he could toss them in the flames. No, they might explode. He didn't really know what would happen if you put a battery in a fire, but he had a vague memory of his dad saying it was a dangerous thing to do. Now, out of the corner of his eye, he caught Luxa and Henry exchanging uneasy glances. You could blind yourself, he added, just for effect. Well, that might happen if they exploded. Merith nodded and gingerly set the dead batteries back by Gregor. He rolled them around with his sandal, making Luxa and Henry nervous. But when he saw that Merith looked nervous too, he stuck the duds in his pocket. Vicus and Solvet returned just as the food was ready. They looked worried. Everyone gathered around as Merith passed out the fish, bread, and something that reminded Gregor of a sweet potato, but wasn't. Boots, dinner time, said Gregor, and she ran over. When she realized they weren't following, she turned her head and waved impatiently to the roaches. Temp, tick, dinner! An awkward social moment. No one else had thought to invite the roaches. Merith had not prepared enough food. Clearly it wasn't standard to dine with the roaches. Fortunately, they shook their heads. No, princess, we eat not now. They started to scurry away. Stay there, said Boots, pointing at Temp and Tick. You stay there, big bugs. 
and the roaches obediently sat down. Boots, said Gregor, embarrassed. The, you don't have to stay. She orders everybody around, he told the roaches. It's just she wants to keep playing with you, but she has to eat first. We will sit, said one stiffly, and Gregor had the feeling the bug wanted him to mind his own business. Everyone ate hungrily except Vicus, who seemed distracted. So when we, when leave we? So when leave we? Yeah, this was it, said Henry, through a mouthful of fish. We do not, said Solvit. The crawlers have refused to come. Luxa's head snapped up indignantly. Refused? On what grounds? They do not wish to invite the anger of King Gorger by joining our quest, said Vicus. They have peace with both humans and rats now. They do not want to unseat that. Now what, thought Gregor? They needed two roaches. It said so in the prophecy of Grey. If the roaches didn't come, could they still rescue his father? We have asked them to rethink their position, said Solovit. They know the rats are on the march. This may sway them in our direction. Or in the rats, muttered Luxa, and Gregor secretly agreed. The roaches had debated trading overlanders to the rats even when they knew the rats would eat them. And that was just yesterday when they were, there was no war. Hmm, if Boots hadn't been so appealing, no doubt they would be dead now. The roaches weren't fighters. Gregor thought they would do what was best for their species, and the rats were probably the stronger ally. Or they would be, if you could trust them. What makes the roaches think they can believe the rats? Asked Gregor. The crawlers do not think in the same manner we do, said Vicus. Hmm. Well, then how do they think? Asked Gregor. Without reason or consequence, Henry broke in angrily. They are the stupidest creatures in the Underland. Why, they can barely even speak. Silence, Henry, said Vicus sharply. Gregor glanced back at Temp and Tick, but the roaches gave no sign that they had heard. Of course they had. The roaches didn't seem too bright, but it was just rude to say it in front of them. Besides, that wasn't going to make them want to come along. Remember you, when Sandwich arrived in the Underland, the crawlers had been there for countless generations. No doubt they will remain when all thought of warm blood has passed, said Vicus. That is a rumor, said Henry dismissively. No, it's not. Cockroaches have been around like 350 million years, and people have only been here about six, said Gregor. His dad showed him a timeline when the different animals had evolved on Earth. He remember being impressed by how old the cockroaches were. How do you know this? Luxa spoke abruptly, but Gregor could tell she was actually interested. It's science. Archaeologists dig up fossils and stuff, and they can tell how old things are. Cockroaches, uh, well, I mean crawlers, are really old, and they've never really changed much, said Gregor. He was getting shaky on gra getting on shaky ground here, but he thought that was true. They're pretty amazing. He hoped Temp and Tick were listening. Bika smiled at him. For a creature to survive so long, it is no doubt as smart as it needs to be. I don't believe in your science, said Henry. The crawlers are weak. They cannot fight. They will not last. That is how nature intended it. Gregor thought of his grandma, who was old and depended on the kindness of stronger people now. He thought of Boots, who was little and couldn't yet open a door. And then there was his friend Larry, who had to go to the hospital emergency room three times last year when his asthma flared up and he couldn't get air into his lungs. Is that what you think, Luxa? said Gregor. Do you think something deserves to die that's not strong? It does not matter what I think if that is the truth, said Luxa evasively. But is it the truth? That is an excellent question for the future ruler of Regalia to ponder, said Vicus. They ate quite er, quickly, and Vicus suggested they all try to sleep. Gregor had, Gregor had no idea if it was night or not, 
but he felt tired and didn't object. While he spread out a thin and woven blanket at the edge of the chamber, Boots tried to teach Temp and Tick to play patty cake. The roaches waved their front legs in confusion, not understanding what was going on. Pat cake, pat cake, bake them in. Bake me cake fast you can. Pat it, pick it, mark with a B. Put it often for big bug in me, sang Boots as she clapped in there and touched the roach's feet. The bugs were completely baffled. What sings the princess? What sings? asked Tim. Or maybe that was Tick. It's a song we sing with babies in the overland, said Gregor. She put you in it. Now that is a big honor, he said. She only puts someone in a song if she really likes them. Me like Big Bug, said Boots with satisfaction and sang the song again with the roaches. Sorry, guys. Uh, she needs to sleep now, said Gregor. Come on, Boots. Sleepy time. Say goodnight. Boots spontaneously hugged the roaches. Night, Big Bug. Sleep tight. Gregor was glad she left out Don't Let the Bed Bugs Bite. Gregor snuggled down with her under the blanket on the hard stone floor. After her long nap, she really wasn't sleepy. He let her play with the flashlight a while, clicking it on and off. But he was afraid she'd run down the batteries and it was making the underladders restless. Finally, he got her to settle down and sleep. As he drifted off, he thought he heard Temp, or maybe it was Tick, whispering, honors us the princess honors us he didn't know what woke him by the stiffness in his neck he must have been lying on the hard floor for hours he drowsily reached over to pull boots's warm body next to him but he found only cold stone his eyes snapped open and he sat up his lips parted to call her name as his vision came into focus but no sound came out. Boots was in the center of a big round chamber, rocking from foot to foot as she turned calmly in a circle. The flashlight she held illuminated the room in sections. He could see the figures stretching out in every direction in perfect concentric rings. They swayed in unison, some to the left, some to the right with slow, mesmerizing movements. In total silence, hundreds of cockroaches were dancing around boots. And that's the end of the chapter. What do you think they're doing? Dancing around boots? Hmm. You better come back for chapter 15 and then you'll figure it out. I hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, I hope you're having fun. Let's see, what else is going on? Uh, spring break? Are you doing some fun stuff? We went out shopping and hey, we got um, everything we needed. So that was great. Uh, we finished our puzzle we were working on and we played a game on Uno. So we're keeping busy here. I hope you're having a good time and I'll see you when you come back for chapter 15. Bye.